working on our gear blank. We've taken our two and a half inch stock, we've faced it and bored a three quarter inch hole to fit on this three quarter inch mandrel. And this mandrel is about three thousandths larger on one end than it is on the other. So when we press it on the gear blank, it'll hold it in place. Now we set our part in the arbor press. gear blank. And there you have it. Now we'll go over to the uh, dividing head and we'll cut our gears. This is a dividing head. It has some important features that we need to point out. Uh, one of the things is it swivels so that you can make beveled gears. We're making a spur gear so we want to set it at 90 degrees. Once you get it set, which we'll indicate it here in a second, we'll snug it down with these 19 millimeter bolts in the back. Tighten that real quick. Second, it has these interchangeable plates. Now these plates have a number of holes drilled in them to allow you to index in to the, the correct pitch of your teeth. So you would loosen this bolt here, take this handle off, then there are three screws holding this adjustment, and then it comes off and you, you so they're interchangeable, there are several interchangeable blades. So what we're going to start with because we're not actually, we're going to work on centers. Back this up a little bit. And tighten this chuck on the end of this arbor. And using this arbor, I'm going to indicate whether we're at 90 degrees or not. Okay, now we want to make sure that our part is actually parallel to the table. So we've set up a test indicator that we're going to measure on either side of this to make sure it is the same height. So we come around this side, just that little bit, and we're at zero. Come around the other side. And we're about a half thousandth out, and I'm going to call that good. So at this point, we've got to do a little bit of math, tighten some things down, and make sure that we've got the right dimensions for cutting up our gear. One of the things we want to make sure is that our cutter is on center with our blank. And one of the easiest ways I know to do that is to come across the top and I've measured my the width of my cutter. The width here is 269 thousandths. And I know that I have a th three quarter inch arbor. So I set my test indicator on my surface gauge, setting the surface gauge on the table. And I'm going to back this camera up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my surface gauge with my test indicator. And I come across the top of my arbor. And I'm zero here. I've got that set at zero. 
So then I come and touch the top of my tool. Now, the top of my cutter is about eight thousandths higher than my part. So I'm going to raise my table up to zero here. So I've got zero off the top of my and I'm going to have to move my indicator up just a little bit because I'm running into my arbor. So we'll adjust my indicator again. Come zero on the top of my gear cutter and I come across the top of my tool a little bit off there so I'm going to reset it on my tool. There's my zero. Come across here. There is well, there is zero there when I come across my tool. So we are good right there. I'm going to lock that down. Now I did the math. So I know I have to move up 241 thousandths to get my center on my tool. So I'll reset my zero back up a little bit so you can see that now. And I will reset zero on my knee and I'll raise it up 241 thousandths. So there's 100, 240, one thousandths, and I'll lock that down. And the rest of my cuts should be on center with my tool. There are pages of calculations and formulas that you can find in your shop reference or your machinist handbook or your math book. Uh, but the reality is, as a machinist, you're really only going to need to know these three things. So you're outside diameter, your diametral pitch, and the number of teeth. If you know those three things, or at least two of those three things, you should be able to use these formulas that you see on the screen now to finish the gear that you need to cut. Then if you've got these three things, then the last thing you'll need to know is the whole depth, or the depth that you're going to uh, cut into the gear blank with your involute gear cutter to cut the proper gear size. Now looking at these three gears, we have two different sizes. We have a uh, number three that is a 12P. We have a number five that is a 12P. And another number three and this one is a 16P. Now this is important because if you're going to make two different cutters, say you're going to make one that's 25 tooth and the other one that's 50 tooth so you have a 2 to 1 gear ratio you would use these two cutters the 12p because there's any gears that you make the diametral pitch have to match or the gears won't mesh to understand that over here on the right I've downloaded this uh, illustration here's the 12p here's the 16p or diametral pitch and you see the the huge difference in this one as opposed to this one. If you tried to get these two gears to match, it wouldn't work. To understand what diametral pitch is, I'm going to enlarge this just a bit. So we're going to zoom in and scroll down. This illustration here talks about uh, circular pitch. Here is just the uh, distance between one tooth to another. When you talk about diametral pitch, diametral pitch is the number of teeth on one inch worth of the pitch diameter and here's where the pitch diameter comes into play you have this this uh, two gears in meshing and you remember when you cut uh, your screw threads you had a pitch diameter that you measured with three wire method well this is theoretically the same thing in your screw threads it's where your uh, nut meshed with your bolt and your internal and external threads made it up and how they, they, they fit. Well this is the same thing with gears. Your pitch diameters if for two gears this is the, this point right here where the, the two gears will 
meet up and if you don't have the same diametral pitch then these gears won't mesh. Now to understand this uh, let's just do a few theoretic problems. Say your uh, foreman comes to you and says hey I need you to cut me a gear with a six and one quarter inch diam outside diameter and 48 teeth. Well you have two of the things you need to know. You know your number of teeth and you know the outside diameter. Well, now you're going to need to know what is your diametral pitch. Well to get your diametral pitch you could use this formula which is the number of teeth divided by the pitch diameter. We aren't given the pitch diameter. We're given two different things. We're given the number of teeth and we're given the outside diameter. So we look at this other formula to find our pitch diameter we need uh, the number of teeth divided by the circular pitch. Again we don't have that so we'll look to this third formula, this one here, and it says your diametral pitch is equal to the outside diameter, that one which we have, so let's put down 6.250 times the number of teeth which is 48 and we're going to take all of that by the number of teeth plus 2. Uh, we'll slide the uh, calculator in and and if we take 6.25 and we multiply it by 48 we get 300. Now we have 300 divided by 50 and that just becomes 6. Now that we have our pitch diameter or our D is equal to 6, we can get our diametral pitch, which is the number of teeth, 48, divided by 6, which is our pitch diameter, and that becomes 8. So we have an 8P gear, or the diametral pitch of this particular gear would be 8. Let's assume now that uh, we're, we're given two different uh, bits of information. We still are saying that we're given the problem that we need to make a gear with 48 teeth and with a diametral pitch now of 12, but we don't know the outside diameter. So to find the outside diameter, we're going to use this formula, D O is equal to the number of teeth. So let's go ahead and write the number of teeth, 48 plus 2 and we're going to divide that by the diametral pitch. Now the diametral pitch on this one is 12. So we take 50 divided by 12 and we get the answer for our outside diameter as 4 inches 166 thousandths. So now we have the three things that we need to know. We have our number of teeth, diametral pitch, and our outside diameter. Let's look at another one. Uh, we'll do this one because we also have a cutter that will cut 48 teeth, a number three cutter. And for here we also were called out. We have 48 teeth. We have a pitch of 16, a diametral pitch of 16, and we know the outside diameter. So once again our outside diameter is going to be the number of teeth, 48, plus 2, and we're going to divide that by our diametral pitch, in this case it's 16. So we take 50, now divided by 16, and our outside diameter of the cutter of our gear now will be 3.125. So now we've worked through a couple of uh, theoretical problems. Uh, let's work with the gear that I'm actually going to be cutting. Uh, I've decided I wanted to cut 25 teeth. So I have 25 teeth. So 25 tooth cutter. 25. So that's our number 5. 
and I know that this number 5 cutter has a diametral pitch of 12. So what I need to know is my outside diameter. So my D O and to find my outside diameter well, I'll use the formula N plus 2 divided by the diametral pitch or 27 divided by 12 27 divided by 12 becomes 2.250 inches so that is the outside diameter that we'll cut for the gear that we're going to cut here in a moment now we need to know what is our hole depth and if you look at that the formula for that one is listed as HT that's the hole depth so how deep are we going to make our cutter the hole depth for this cutter uh, the formula is 2.250 divided by the P which is 12 our diametral pitch so 2.250 divided by 12 and we'll bring our uh, calculator in bring it into the screen here and we will clear this number so we want to know 2.250 divided by 12 and that gives us a hole depth of 0.1875 the last thing we have to figure is how to calculate the number of turns now for our theory theoretical 48 tooth cutter we know that our di uh, dividing head has a gear ratio and as most of them do of 40 to 1 and that's what we have written over here so to find out how many turns we're going to make for a 48 tooth cutter if you choose to do this rather that's 40 divided by 48 and if we reduce, reduce this down and it becomes 5 over 6 and we look over here this is a list of the four different dividing plates that we have we see that uh, we can't divide any of these numbers by 6 we can't divide any of these by 6 or these but we can this first one if we multiply 5 6 by 3 this 3 over 3 so that becomes 15 over 18 so on an 18 hole dividing plate on that line we will move 15 holes for each cut well let's scroll down a little bit and we'll look at uh, what if with my 25 tooth cutter so I've got 25 tooth cutter and R40 we can reduce that uh, that number 40 divided by 5 would be 8 25 divided by so 8 fifths 1 and 3 fifths once again if we multiply this by 3 this becomes 1 and 9 fifteenths so what we'll end up doing is moving one full turn plus 9 fifteenths now we've done the math and we know that we're going to have to go more than one turn so we're going to have to go one turn and we've determined that with a 15 hole space which we have the bottom of this disc so we've got to go nine holes so I've moved these dividers So when I spin around, this is my very first mark. I've got it set zero at the top. I've got it set on the 15 mark. I've counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there is nine. So that would be my first or my second cut. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back to the beginning. Okay. We're going to go ahead and turn the machine on. Now remember, when you're cutting on a dividing head, you cut towards the dividing head. So 
cutter is going to turn in its clockwise motion. And I've got it set at about 500 RPM for this aluminum. And I'm going to come in and just touch. There, I've just touched. I'm going to go ahead and zero out on my x-axis at this point. Move off my part. Where need to be. We are. Zero my y-axis. Zero my x-axis. In fact, I'm going to come a little bit further off on my x. Make sure I got enough clearance. But I'll come back to my zero. When I come back to my zero, I'm going to do that so that. Go ahead and move this so you can see it. So I've touched off on my part, reset my x axis. Now I'm going to go ahead and move in. I've set my y, I've set my x at a distance off the part so I can return back to that so I don't end up rotating through my part when I'm rotating with the dividing head. So I'm going to go ahead and move in, and so I'm going to go ahead and lock that down right there and call that good. We'll go ahead and kick on my power feed. Find a nice speed for that. Pretty nice. We're going to go ahead and go back through our part and rotate. zero mark. Now I'm going to move this camera out a little bit so you can see all that I'm doing. So I've set my blades. I've got my nine. I come around one and then I come around to that nine. You want to be real careful that you don't overshoot it. There's popped into there. And then once I've hit my mark, I'm going to go ahead and spin my blades around and I'm ready for the next cut. So I'm going to take my second pass now.
Now one of the things you'll notice is I'm not using a whole lot of coolant on here. I put a couple of drops of Tab Magic on it, and that's enough. You don't need to flood this. It's not galling up on my cutter. A couple of drops on there was enough. And if it looks like it's going to start slowing down, I'll maybe add a drop or two more as time goes by. But I'm not going to just flood this. It slings it everywhere and makes a huge mess. And that's not what we're about. We just want to cut a gear. We're not trying to make a mess. So we're going to spin for our, our third pass. So there's one. And then again, up to our nine. And then we're, as soon as we're done, we spin this around and get it ready for the next pass again. And we will continue like this until all 25 teeth have been cut.